Welcome back to the Dugma Junction YouTube channel and uh, today you join me from Highfield Road. The objective of today um, is to repair or should I say rebuild a Hornby Class 50 chassis which we have in front of us just here. Now I recently purchased this off eBay for £30 and all it had on it was the two compressors, the fuel tank and the two battery boxes. It also had the lighting boards on each end. Now the wires were not included. I've added those onto that side for testing of the lighting board, which I'm pleased to say works fine. On the other end, when I tried getting it to work on the second live feed, uh, live stream feed, which I've done, um, it, it turned out that the lights weren't working on that side. Uh, however, I have since che checked the lighting board. Um, I'm not sure where I put it. It's on my desk somewhere. Um, which one is it? I believe it was this one. I'm not sure if you can see yet. So that one, I have check checked it with a multimeter um, and the bulbs are still fine and they still work. So that would indicate to me that there was something wrong with the wiring somewhere. Now I did double check the wiring back and it was all fine. But I think that these little red and black wires may have been the culprit. So I have got some spares. So we're going to try and rectify that rectify that issue in this video as well so um what am i going to need to do this rebuild well first and foremost uh, obviously the chassis i've got i had two bogies spare in my spares box i had one motor spare along with the drive shafts and um, some back plates for the cabs which your lighting wires go through some rubber grommets which also go down the side of the motor a uh, PCB board which I've already well which you would already have seen me tin up on the previous live stream um, since then I have gone back over it and tidied it up now I've got the solder in I'm working gonna need some buffers because it's missing some buffers so I've got some spares there that is the code x9237 they are quite difficult to get hold of um, but they do come up on occasions now is the best time to try and find them. Now Hornby have now re-released two Class 50s. That's what I've done with those when they released 26. And also some underframe detail to go on as well, which is missing off the chassis. And last but not least, I'm going to put in a non-motorised, well, the non-working fan unit as well. And then what we'll do, um, we'll put it all back together hopefully get it working with no problems at all see if we can rectify the lighting issues and then we will start adding on all the super detail parts which are missing which i want to put back on perfect so uh, this is the time for me now to get the soldering iron on ready to go and then we can start uh, assembling the chassis so the first part of the process is to put the motor back into the chassis itself so what i'm going to do is i'm going to quickly take off the back the fuel tank at the bottom which is this thing and the reason i'm doing that is that if you look inside the chassis you'll see there's some little locating holes um if i got anything i can point and show you uh, you can probably see them but you've got four little locating holes now when those four little locating holes go the rubber grommets with these two little nipples on the end so i've got to try and get them back through so i'm just going to try and get the fuel tank off without breaking it and then we'll try and put these uh, rubber grommets in to see if they fit so that's the fuel tank taken away from the bottom it is literally just held on by four little clips but you just have to be careful because when you bend these little clips they can be a bugger to get back and um, fit up against the chassis again so also these little rubber grom grommets you might have to modify the little nipples on the end cut a little bit of them away sorry it's turned around the right way uh yeah just modify them cut a little bit of them away and reshape a little bit um, because I think what happens is, is when they actually get put in at the factory I think they off they might blob the ends um, to stop them falling back out um, and then obviously when you do force them out and they try and put them back in the um, width for the, the nipple was such uh, too big uh, to get back through the holes so let's um, try and put the motor back in with the one hat or with the drive shafts we say first so I've put a little purple dot, oh, I'm not sure if you can see that, sorry, I put a little purple dot on the motor, just so I know which is the right way up. 
And again, these little nipples go at the bottom. So I'm just gonna put these around the motor now and then try and lower it in without breaking the wires from the pickup as well, which is quite important. And then what you can do then is turn it upside down and just double check that the rubber things have come through the bottom, which they have. Perfect, so I'll just give it a little, another little press down. Make sure the motor's all flush and seated properly. So that's that bit done, that's great. Um, and then we can go about putting the, the fuel tank back on. And that is a certain way, it goes on only one way. So that's the wrong, that's the wrong way, obviously, because you see it's not going over the little clips. So you spin him around and then he should just clip on. All right. So that's one bit of the assembly done. Now what we're gonna do is gonna go about putting the uh, motor bogies back in. So now it's a case of putting the bogies back into the chassis itself. So I'm just gonna take this one away a moment. Now on the bogey, what you wanna do is take the housing off, take the worm drive, uh, sorry, the worm gear out itself um, that was just come apart, but give them a give them a good clean up. All right, and then just pop them to one side for the, for a minute. Then you've got the actual bogey itself. Now a couple of little things on the Hornby Class Fifty bogey. You've got these rail deflectors or life savers on the front. They're always cab facing, and also the red wire is normally the closest one to you. And this assembly where the worm gear goes in is also cab facing as well. So what I'm going to do is now feed this through the underside of the chassis. Now, on the chassis itself, you've got six little holes. So you've got two there, one there, and I'm sorry, I'm just reaching around the camera, two there and one there as well. Now these two holes, that one and that one, they are locating holes for the pins which are on the bogey, which I'll show you in just a moment. And then these holes here, and here are for the pickups. So let's just put that down for a brief moment. Now on the Hornby Class 50 bogey, I just mentioned that locating pin, and that is that there. So let's um, get the bogey up into the chassis now. So this can be a bit fiddly on camera, so let's get the chassis up, start feeding through the holes. And also make sure you've got the right bogey at the right end because one bogey will have longer wires from the pickup to the PCB board than the other. So pull them up, make sure there's no snagging on the wires and they're not caught between the chassis and the bogies. And then if you slowly put it down and move the bogey backwards and forward, the locating pin should come into effect, which it has. So if I move it away, you'll see it's gone and then just bring it back up and it's in. And then you want to rest it back on the bench. Just take the weight of the chassis a little bit and just pull these wires and make sure they're not caught cool. again, because you don't want them caught. Cool. And then just re relocate the locating pin. So that that's the bogey in. The problem you've got now is if you go and pick that chassis up, the bogey is going to fall straight out. So this is where I go and put the secure the bogey by putting the worm drive back in and connecting it up to the drive drive shaft assembly so just a quick note on the drive shaft assembly i've already done it um but what you want to do is just separate it put a bit of grease um i use this one oh, reaching across the camera sorry i use that one from roads and rails i don't think it's very much a couple of quid i think um, and that just keeps it all nice and lubricated and then you want to get the the worm gear and just click it clip it onto the end Okay, so he's all good to go. And then you wanna pick up the bogey at the same time as the chassis, because you don't want it falling away. And then you wanna locate the worm gear back in its location on the bogey. Then you can pop that one back on the bench, get your little cover. Now your little cover itself has got four clips. So when you put it back down, just make sure and double check that all four clips have clipped in. 
So let's just do that now. And then what you can do for a sanity check, you can look down the sides. Probably better to do it from underneath the bogey, although it's not gonna pick it up on the camera, I don't expect. But you can normally see if they are sitting flush against the side, which those two are, and they are as well. So that's that bogey in place. That isn't coming away. So that now means we can move on to the other bogey. So I've just spanned the chassis around so we can get to work with the other bogey. Just something else very quickly as well. Uh, you can do this at two different stages. When you fed the pickups back through the underside of the chassis and you've got the bogey on the locating pin, you can use some grease or some oil um, to put on the gear just to keep it lubricated or alternatively if you've already put it all back together on the housings of the um, worm drives there's a little square cut out so you can always feed it through their worst case scenario okay so let's go and put this other bogey in first first of all uh, again let's take that worm drive out they do tend to fall apart but um I'll grab you in a minute. Get the wires up. Let's try and do it on camera if I can, if I can see. Perfect. This is one. Oh, sorry, let's go back a little bit so you can actually see what I'm doing. And again, pull the wires up, making sure they're not snagged anywhere. And then it should just fit on the little locating pin again, look. Okay. Back on the bench, take a little bit of the weight off, give it a little tug, just make sure there's nothing cool. Can then get the other worm gear. Let me just pick it up. Where did that little piece go? Uh, it's here somewhere, there it is, look. Perfect. Um, and then get your little worm gear, put them in the housing like last time, in the bogey, all right. Actually, I've made a little tiny mistake there, sorry. Get your worm gear, get your drive rod, clip them into the drive rod. This way it makes it easier, so you don't have to put it in when it's all connected. They can be a little bit stubborn, let's just take him out. All right, so he's all connected. Get my grease. Give it a little lubrication. That's over generous, but it'll be okay. Uh, feed him back in. All right, so there's plenty there. And then put him back in to his location on the bogey itself. Sometimes the ends do fall off when you're putting them in so just try try again and that one's in there we go look lovely jubbly uh, and like I said this is the stage now where you can add a bit more grease if you wanted to so let's do that just for demonstration purposes and I put it on oh too much ignore that just put a bit across the coils there on the worm drive all right so that's that one and that'll be plenty Get the grease out of the way, get a towel in a moment, and uh, just get rid of that dollop of grease on the bench. Perfect. Uh, then we want to go to the housing, and again, like we've done on the other side, repeat the process and just put that one on. And then just make sure it's all sat properly, which that one hasn't. So now that's a good example. If you look down, you'll see that that one's on the top, is not quite seated correctly. And now if I pushed it, you can see that it's all sat nicely. And you can check that again, like I said, by looking underneath the wheel set to make sure they're all done. And that's good. So we are getting there. That is the bogies now done. I just want to double check those wires from the underside. Basically what I'm looking is down the side of the bogies now, just to triple check that there's no pickup wires caught between the bogies and the chassis which there isn't on this side. 
There isn't on that side. No, not on that side. And not on that side. So we're good to go. So let's spin him back around to the way he was. So that's the bogeys done. Next up now is to apply the PCB board. So the PCB board I'm using on, the, on this one is 1621X009R1. I have got wiring guides on my YouTube channel. Just punch in that number and you'll find it. Um, but to be honest, on the Hornby Class 50s, I think they are all exactly the same with this style PCB board with the um, 12 tabs on. Or so well, it's technically 14 if you pick up the motor ones. So you're going to need a couple of little screws, which I've got here somewhere. Um, and I'm also going to need a screwdriver. So if I move the pickup wires out of the way. He should sit there. Hopefully my thing's still magnetized. Good, it is. So there's one, two screws, one at the top right. I'll show you those in a moment. And then one on the bottom left, I believe. It does tell you on the PCB board where the screws go by a, a big screw icon, normally. Put those in. Okay, now if I just bring the chassis up so you can see the PCB board. See the screw there with the screw icon and also the screw there with the screw icon. So that's the PCB board in itself. Now at this stage, what I'm going to do is start soldering. Um, so I'm gonna start soldering the motor pickups or the motor contacts to the PCB board. Then I will do the pickups from the bogies to the board itself. And then we will, first of all, we'll wire up these lights to make sure these work. And then once I'm happy that it runs in the direction backwards and forward, all okay, and these lights work. We'll then tackle the problem of the non-working lights on the other side. Right, so in regards to the wires which go on to the PCB board itself, I'm not gonna sit here and record me soldering on wires to those tabs. Um, two reasons. One is my soldering skills are not great and I'd rather them not be on camera because I keep making mistakes every time I do it. It's quite time consuming to try and film it without your hands getting in the way. And um, also on these Hornby Class 50s, you can get these little black grommets, if I can show it on the camera. Um, and normally you feed the wire, oh, sorry, it's not getting out of focus. Normally you feed the wires up through the black hole, sorry, the little holes. Um, and then you put these over the top to keep them in place. But on this example, I am soldering directly to the PCB board. What I will do though, I will quickly tell you where each wire goes. Um, and then at least that way, if you wanna write it down, if you come to do this yourself, you then know where each wire goes. There, again, there are also videos on my YouTube channel to show you how to wire it, but I will just very quickly go over it in a summary now. Okay, so with bearing in mind now, you wanna be looking at your chassis with the fan would be that side, okay? You wanna start off. Now at the top, trying to move this across here so I can see. So I'm gonna go call these one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, sorry, I'm moving it so I can't see. Seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, right? So number one is a black wire which comes from that plug for the lights. And then number two, is the red wire which comes from that plug number three is the black wire from the pickup from the bogey number four is the red wire which comes from the bogey pickup number five uh, is a black wire which comes from this plug and then number six is the red wire which comes from that plug coming on to this side number seven is a red wire which would come from the plug which is on this side and number eight is a black wire, which comes from the plug on this side. Number nine is the black wire, which comes from the pickup. Number 10 is the red wire from the pickup from the bogey. Number 11 is the red wire, which would come from the lighting unit on this corner. And then number 12 is the black wire, which comes from this lighting unit or plug on this corner as well. So there's a quick summary. I'm gonna go off camera now and just get this all wired up 
and then I will be back with you. Very, very quickly before I go any further, as I almost forgot, you've also got to put the back cab plates in at this stage. Um, so if you move the lighting wires out of the way, they go in these little grooves like so. Okay, and then what you do, you just feed those through the channels there and back out the other side. And you do that on both sides. And then obviously you can wire up to your tabs or solder onto your tabs. So I'm gonna do that now. So there we, oh, sorry, dropping the camera there. So we made a start on the wire in here. So I've got the, the light units in, wired up, the two pickups, and then obviously for the light unit down here as well. Again, just make sure you feed these wire through these back plates. It's a step that I almost missed doing. Um, so that's great. And then obviously after we've done our little test, we'll check on this side. I've also included, sorry, I've also soldered on the two pickup wires on this side of the PCB board. And all that leads me to do is to put the lighting unit wires on these contacts here. So let's get you up to track level and it'd be the moment of truth to see if it all works. Then. Right, let's just move it back a little bit. So first and foremost, does this lighting unit still work after I've messed about with it on several occasions, hopefully. Good, so we've got a white light and we've got a red light. Perfect, so that one's still working. Now, let's just see if we get any power. We have, yeah. And let's see if it comes the other way. Perfect. Now that little clicking noise you can hear is where the decoder is rubbing against the drive shaft so nothing to worry about there but that's good that means we've got a working chassis so all that i need to do now is to rectify the lighting fault so we have lights on this side uh wire it all up and get it all connected then we can put the buffers on the other super detail parts um, and also do the little fan unit and then that chassis will be more and more or less ready to go so let's get it back down on the bench and we'll do the next bits. Well, that's the other wiring done for the uh, lighting unit. Apart from that sitting a little bit high, which I can rectify off camera in a moment, I'm happy to report that we've got a white light and a red light. A white light and a red light. Make sure it's red and white. Red and white. So now Let's just make sure it still runs. There you go, that. So we now have a running spare chassis. So next now is to put the fan in and then we can start adding the buffers and the super detail parts. Well, I'm really happy with that progress now. Uh, we've got everything all wired up and it's all working as it should. One of the little things it's gonna do now is put the fan back in. Like I said, I'm gonna have this example unpowered. I don't really think they need to be rotating. You can't see it when the locos are going around the layout anyway. Just something I will just mention as well. As you can see, I have tidied up the wire in, put the little grommets back in their places. Well, these were spares on both sides made it nice and tidy there is one rogue wire from the pickup there unfortunately it does have to be like that because it's just not quite long enough to sit and go across to the pickup and sit in the little recess by my nail there so that won't be a problem because worst case scenario i can just put a bit of black uh black tack in there and just hold it in place but if it does start rubbing against the drive shaft so now i'm just going to put this little fan unit in and quite literally, it's done by two, uh, four, sorry, there, there, get the right number in a minute. It's done by a couple of little pins. You've got one there, one there, and one there. And then you've got two screws. So if I just pop them in situ, put them there. I've got me screws. Let's magnetize the end of my screwdriver a moment. Perfect. Just making sure there's no wires under where these screws should go. Because last thing you want to do is put a screw through a wire and cause any sort of short. So I won't put him all the way in because I've got to spin him around just double check there's no problems on the other side. 
move my screwdriver out of the way. And then on this side, you can see through that little hole that there's no wires obstructing it. So you can go in and then tighten that one up, spin them back around. And now I'm just gonna use my finger now just to move that wire out of the way as it goes down. And that's all in place as it should be. So that is getting close to completion now. Now, the only the only downside about this little project I'm doing at the moment, which is curable, which is good, is that you'll see this chassis I used, the chassis block itself was actually a weathered example, whereas the bogies and all the bits I'm putting on are obviously from an unweathered example of class 50. But that's fine because that means I can, I've can i got two options. I can either weather up the under frame detail to match so I can do the bogies to match that or just do the whole complete thing weathered. Or alternatively, I can mask off the bogies and then sp spray paint this black so it gives it the pristine look. So I've got a couple of options there. But um, yeah, this, this chassis, the reason I'm, I've gone and done this little project is because we have a, a Hornby Class 50 at the moment with a chassis where it was dropped by the previous owner. So these little points here, where I'm putting on the um, screwdriver on each side, were snapped and it was hanging down. Now what I've done to rectify that issue, I put a little plate from there to there on each side. Um, it has actually held up and been quite a good repair and I've had no problems with it since but I, will, I would like to have a spare chassis ready to go in the event of the repair fails or there's damage to another chassis down the line so it's always good just to have a spare one ready to go and we never know worst case scenario down, later down the road if I decide that the class 50 um, collection is not for me anymore and I want to go to a Cura scale it's nice to have a spare complete chassis to go with the lot for somebody else to use later on or if i need to rob bits off of it for another one i can do that as well right so next i am going to do what have i got on this one so they're the 3d ladders for the buffers i can get hold of those for you so if you want some let me know um also got some class 50 buffers to go on which is like i said x9237 quite difficult to get hold of i think i mentioned that already but with hornby releasing 5044 and 5042 at the moment you might start seeing these popping up online so i'd advise to grab them and then i've also got these little electrical boxes to put on the bottom which funnily enough i'm glad i've kept these off of 50s i've scrapped or got rid of because 5014 sorry 5049 the gbr one has got these missing and they were missing from brand new so i can replace them at some point so i've got a few spares there so let's i don't think i've got any loose spare buffers so i'll just open up this packet let me just get a pair of scissors a moment so let's take these away You get a decent pair which aren't blunt really to be fair so this is either going to go one of two ways sometimes the buffers they will go straight in and you will not need to apply any glue because they they can be a really nice tight snug fit alternatively if they are a little bit loose um i would just apply a little bit of glue where my nail is do not get it on the metal shaft because if you do, you'll stop the spring mechanism of the buffer itself and don't overdo it. You just literally tiny, tiny little blob, one on one side, one on the other, um, and that will do you. So let's see how we get on. Are we going to be in luck? Let's just see if I can put this one in. Now with other buffers like the Class 31, there is a, a particular way they've got to go in. But with the class 50 ones, they are uniform, so they can go in any way. So line him up. And yeah, that one is very loose. So he's not going to sit in there. He's going to need glue. Let's try this one. Yeah, he's loose as well. So you need a little bit of glue on that one. Let's just try the other end. Let's get another buffer. 
yeah, again, quite loose. And again, quite loose. So like I said, um, I'm going to go away, do this off camera because I need my hands will get, get in the way. I'm going to put a tiny bit of super glue on that bit there. And it is literally a midgen or smidgen, should I say. Again, I can't reiterate enough. Do not get it on this metal shaft because if it goes in there, you'll lose your springing effect on the buffer. So let's go away now. Um, I'm going to go off camera and do that. I, I'm sure you don't need me to show you how to fit buffers. Um, if there is anyone out there who needs support of that, please feel free to leave a comment below and I can do a video on it. But um, I don't think I need to show you now. So let's get off camera and let's fit these buffers a moment. Just very quickly, actually, there is an alternative way you could do this if you wanted to, is if you get a little bit of glue on the tip of a cocktail stick. Like I said, you don't want too much. Literally, a little, a little drop like that is more than adequate. If you um, get the end of the class 50 and in the hole, I literally just rub it around the inside like that. Um, and that is another way to do it. Uh, and then, yeah, you can put a tiny bit, like that said, like a little dot, just on the inside. And then you should be able to put your buffer in and it should hold in place. Give it a little push, make sure it's lined up nicely. Just hold it for a second. And then that should set like so okay so that is the that's how i put my buffers in let's put them down and i'll go away and do the other two now right so there we go uh the buffers are in on both sides uh now one one end is better than the other when it comes to springy buffers that one's all right that one's all right put them in well but i must have just just about put a little bit too much glue in these because they do spring stick, well, they do go in and out, but they don't spring, so that's okay. It don't matter. It's one of those things, but um, as long as they're not rock solid and they still do move a little bit to absorb any potential impact, that's fine. Now, that's the chassis more and more or less complete. Just a couple of little more things now to put on. I'm going to spin the locomotive um, upside down, first of all, in the cradle. And... Underneath the locomotive, on these corners here, is where these little bits go. So let me just get a couple out of the bag. Let me put these in. Now, these, believe it or not, can be a bit, um, bit of a pain to put in because with the older 50s they had bigger uh, they had bigger pins so uh so yes on the old ones they had bigger pins but on the uh, old, newer ones they've got thinner pins so they can be a little bit of a pain but uh, we'll give it a go and see make sure the holes are okay get rid of that hair and uh, we'll see if we can get that in there and see if he'll fit in or if he needs gluing in so he's got that one would need gluing in if I use that one, but let me just see if I can find an older style one. That one's got no pins on at all, so he's a broken one. That looks like it's got the thicker pins on it, so let's try this one. Sorry, my hands are going to get in the way, but I will show you once I've put them in. Again, he's a little bit loose. I'll keep going through my spares to see if I can get one which is a, a nice tight fit rather than using glue no he's loose two more left to try it's loose looks like they're all going to be loose to be honest and to be fair that was a weathered one there so i probably should use that okay well that's that's not going to go in without a little bit of glue so what i might as well do is use the one which hasn't got any tabs on it if i can Spin it around. Actually, no, I will use one which got tabs on. Where's my little cocktail stick gone? Right. So I'm going to use a little, little tiny dollop of glue. 
The only unfortunate thing about these things are is once you've glued them in, they ain't coming back out again. Come over the holes. And I can't get the bloody thing in now, typical. There you go. And there's one. So we're just going to double check to make sure that is right on the other chassis and I've just glued it, but yeah, that is correct. It just looks like it's fouling on the bogey for some some reason, but it shouldn't do. Um, once it's running and the bogey's dropped, it, it will miss it. So there's one on that one. Let's just spin him around the other side and we can get the other one in. See if we have any better luck with this one fitting straight in. Again, it's a loose fit, so a little dollop of glue in there, I reckon. It's probably a bit too much, but I'm not going to worry. All right, and then that one's there, so just put a little bit of pressure on it to make sure it's flush. I'll just let that set. And then that's that little bit of super detail done. Let's get these spare ones back in the bag. I've only got four left now, so I'm going to be a bit careful with these. And they're really easy to lose as well, so I always make sure I keep out all my spares in little bags. I did um, actually break a buffer when I was putting the other ones back in, um, so that was a bit of a fortunate, but I did have three miscellaneous ones in the bag, so it's quite fortunate to be able to use one of those. Right, they should be okay. They should set with no problems at all. Now, I'm always or should i say i always like to run my class 50s fan end first so if i spin this one around what we're going to do now is put a put a free link coupling in the front so i've got a, a bag of spares here now the reason i got so many is i always remove the one off the back on all of them because otherwise sometimes they tend well they do they snag in the couplings and then couplings as they're going around corners you got to keep your eye out for these though because some of them have got square ends and some of them have got round ends. So that one's got a square peg as such. And they are really, really fragile and they like to break as well. And they aren't the cheapest to get spares for. That's quite stiff that one, but that's fine. Let's just move them across. Let's just see if I can put them in position. Now that looks like a round hole. So I'm just gonna come off camera a minute while I go through my spares to see if I can find one with a round peg and I'll be right back with you. Okay, so spin the camera back around. Right, so fortunately in my bag of spares, I had some weathered ones and I thought, oh, a weathered one should fit straight away. And it has. So again, little dollop of glue. Again, unfortunately, once you put these in, they ain't coming out without breaking very often. Well, that's too much. Just get that on the mat there. And uh, put it in the hole like that. That should be more than enough glue. I'll just put a, a little tad bit more just in case to be safe. And then I need my long nose pliers. And then we'll put these in. If that glue doesn't set. <laughs> okay, so uh, what I'm doing is just put that chain link coupling in, in the hole. It went in perfectly just a minute ago when I tried it, but you won't see now. Right, he's gone in. Move the chain out of the way, make sure he's square, so that's good. Put the lid back on the glue. <clears throat> and I'll spin it around to the camera and show you what I've just done. So there you go, look. I put the chain link coupling in and it is a weathered one as well so it matches the buffer beam so i'll just give them a couple of minutes to dry and then there's only one thing left to do and that's to put these 3d printed buffer steps on now i was a little bit disappointed because <laughs> these um buffer steps on the hornby class 50 just above them they've got little pinholes where the old steps used to go in now on three of the buffers i managed to drill them out and recover the holes but 
on one buffer I couldn't so I'm not going to have three originals on there and one 3D printed because they do look slightly different so what I will do is just put all four uh, 3D printed examples on so let me just quickly show you these let's move that to one side there you go look so these are 3D printed ladders again let me know if you need some for your class 50s because I can get hold of these quite cheap um, they do go on a certain way believe it or not so that one there would actually go on the left hand buffer the angle always goes towards the buffer beam so and then that yeah so that's a a left hand buffer beam there's two lefts and it can be difficult to tell sometimes that's a left as well so get rid of e and i'll just go through these a moment and get some matching ones so we can put them all on the buffer beams right there we go so i've managed to get the four steps which i need now on the original hornby ones you will find that the plate which goes across the top to affix to the actual buffers itself as per the real example in real life uh, one side is actually longer than the other so it is a bit easier to identify them but on these 3d print ones they are all the same size so you've just got to look at the angle really and remember that the angle goes towards like i said the buffer beam so let's move these to the side a minute and we'll start putting the um start putting them on so again it is just a case of a dollop of glue on top of the buffer beam now i've done this plenty of times so just be very careful you do this not to put too much glue on and the good thing with the Gorilla Glue is it's got good playtime on it to work with it. This is a, a Gorilla Glue gel, which I use quite a lot on my model, and it's quite good. So if I just find one now, let's move these spares out of the way a second. Let's find one which is the right side. So this goes on, like I said, on the left. So I'm going to try and put that in place now. Okay. And then I just need something to try and hold it in place. Sorry, my hand's going to get in the way. And I'll just move it over a little bit. You don't want them too close. Oh. There you go. That should be good. Just level them up a little bit. Just apply a little bit of pressure. Level them off for a minute. Just where the glue sets. Now you don't want them right close against the buffer beam because you've got to remember you've got to get the body back on itself and of course you don't want them snagging against the body the only downside to these 3d printed ones is they are very very fragile um, and they do tend to break really really easily so once they're glued on if you hit them or you know touch them in the wrong well not touch them in the wrong way but if you snag them on something they will snap pretty easy like I said, they are fairly cheap in there. Uh, fairly, like I said, fairly cheap to replace, right? So let's get another one on the other side. And uh, just move me over a second. There we go. So there's two. I'm just gonna let them set for a second. Before I move it and to be fair they don't look too bad I mean if you've got all four on they're all right because obviously they're uniform they look the same but if you actually put them up against the originals they are slightly different right I'm going to trust that they're not going to move I might be a bit too trusting here I'm going to spin it around and do the other side so again a little dollop of glue just leave that gel on there just for a minute to start to go off. Uh, just leave that for a sec. I'll put the bits back in the spares box. Okay, so that should be good to go now. So let's get this one. And then the other one. Sorry, I got my hand in the way. I'll try and do it left-handed if I can. Am 
might be a bit more difficult, but that one's on. And then, I, sorry, I'm going to have to do this one right-handed. This one's proving to be a bit more difficult. Just getting them to balance correctly on the buffer beam. There we go. Square it off. And then hopefully leave that for a minute and they should be set. And then that is more and more or less mission complete for this rebuild of the Hornby Class 50. Let me just zoom back out. He says, oh, it won't let me go any further. But yeah, that is the rebuild of the Hornby Class 50. I hope you find that useful. If you have any questions or comments you want to put below, feel free. Um, I'm always happy to feedback and help where I can. And of course, if there's something else you've noticed, which I may or may have done, not done wrong, uh, or you've got some advice, I'm always open to constructive feedback. So um, let's just get it on the track in a moment once the buffers are set and we can just have a, a quick run around with nobody on. Anyway, let's get up on the track and I'll be right back with you. Well, here we go then. This is the finale of the video. As you can see, the buffer steps are all set and the chain link coupling is there now as well. It does look a little bit odd with the under frame details being weathered and the bogies being pristine. However, like I mentioned, that is something I can easily rectify later on down the road. But yeah, the, this video, um, two live fell, or should I say two failed live streams later, um, and an afternoon out in the cabin doing it recorded like this. I finally have a spare Hornby Class 50 chassis ready to go as and when I need one. So let me just do the test now to make sure we've got some lights. So we've got a white light, let's go direction, and we've got a red light. We've got a white light on the other side. Yes, we have. Let's just change direction again a moment. And hopefully we've got a red one this side as well. Yes, we have. So all good so far. I've given the wheels a clean. I've gave the track a little brush over as well with the track rubber. Let's just see if we have any life. up the power a little bit there we go look and i think they call that a success don't they it is a little bit louder than normal but that might be where the motor's just working all the grease in again more the oil so hopefully after a bit of a running in we'll get rid of that but yeah not bad for something which was made up completely of spares There, come past one more time. There we go. Like I said, job is a good one. Thanks for sticking with it, guys. Um, like I said, if you sat through those two live streams, God, that was a little bit frustrating and confusing. Uh, but we got there in the end, didn't we? So, uh, yeah, I hope you found or you will find this video useful and helpful. And like I said, if you've got any questions, comments, or constructive feedback, feel free to uh, leave a comment below and if I haven't made you dizzy already I'll make you a little bit more dizzy by going around one more time and then we're going to sign off and say that's it from me Wayne here at Highfield Road and we'll be sure to catch in again soon. Take care everybody, bye bye.